Hi, everybody. Welcome to Soho House for this Armory Show panel about the state of the art fair. Uh, my name is Eileen Kinsella. I'm a market reporter with Artnet News and have done a lot of reporting on um, art fairs, especially the last few years, tracing the arc of everything. Um, here with me are Helen Toomer, a veteran fair director um, who is now director of Photo Fairs New York, which is debuting this fall. We have Nicole Berry, who has been director of the Armory Show, executive director for at least the last five years, right? 2017? Six. Okay, six. Yeah. And Maureen Bray, who's executive director of the Art Dealers Association of America, the nonprofit that puts on the art show. I wanted to keep my comments a little bit brief so that I could have them just run through a little bit of their bio and background and, and why they're here sharing their expertise with us about the state of the art fair. So Helen, do you want to go first? Hello. I did tell somebody last night they should never give me a mic again, and uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, hi. Yeah, my name's Helen Toomer. I am the director of Photo Fairs New York, uh, which is happening in September. Um, my background is all in art fairs. Uh, I feel like I got hooked. We were talking about it earlier, that you're either an art fair person or you're not, and I love the craziness of it. Um, I was first an intern at the Affordable Art Fair in 1762 um, <laughs> in London. And I was like, what is this? Like, this is like bizarre. Like this thing just like goes up and then comes down. And I was like, I love the weirdness. So um, then I had my Carrie Bradshaw moment and I got transferred over to New York, um, stepped out of the cab. Oh God, I'm getting too long, sorry. Anyway, um, I worked on, so I've just been working on art fairs for a very, very long time. I I gave up the art fair business um, and I opened up a, um, an artist residency in upstate New York called Stoneleaf Retreat, uh, which is focused on women and families. And I also run another event called Upstate Art Weekend, an annual event, July 21st to 24th. Um, come upstate. And another uh, group called Art Mamas, which is a support group for parents in the arts. So I do a bunch of things, but coming back to launching this art fair um, alongside in the sharing the Javits with the epic Armory show is, um, is very, very exciting. And I'll be quiet now. And Nicole. <laughs> well, I just want to start by saying I'm Nicole Berry, and this is Helen Toomer, and we are not the same person. <laughs> and if Justine Ludwig was here, it would be even better, so that everybody can see that we are three separate people in the art world. <laughs> Women with short hair in the art world are not all the same person. So there you have it. I'm executive director of the Armory Show. I am honored to share the stage with, with all of these women. And um, my background, yeah, I have a very bizarre background. I was an elementary school teacher for eight years before I got in the art world um, and have loved every minute of being in the art world. Started in the secondary market, uh, was working in secondary market galleries on the Upper East Side, and then got into the art fair biz, kind of just like, hey, do you want to go start a fair in Chicago, and yeah, okay, sure, no problem. Um, and have loved it ever since, and yeah, had the opportunity to come back to New York, which as much as I love Chicago, I miss New York terribly. And um, the Armory Show is such a fantastic brand that it was a really amazing opportunity. And um, yeah, have, have enjoyed, I've been the director for six years, but with the fair for set, this will be my seventh fair. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, our thanks to Nicole and Thomas and to the whole Armory Show team for hosting us tonight. We're super grateful. My name is Maureen. I run uh, the Art Dealers Association of America, which is a trade association that, as of today, is Gabby, what, about 205 members across 40 U.S. cities? She's giving me a thumbs up. Um, and in addition to that, the ADA is the organizing partner for the art show, which now takes place every November at the Park Avenue Armory to benefit Henry Street Settlement and hopefully our members who participate in the art show. Uh, and my background was I came from the gallery side and worked in galleries in New York for the last 20, 25 years before starting as the She was a baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and uh, about five years ago, the outgoing director of the ADA at the time said, you know, I'm retiring and I think you should take the position. I said, I don't know anything about running a nonprofit and while we're at it, I don't know anything about running an art <laughs> fair either. 
And she said, no, but you've worked at galleries and you've participated in art fairs. That's what we're looking for. And so that's how I came to take the position in 2018. Great. Um, and I, I'm going to spin it forward, but just, just to step back for a minute, it's, it's no secret that there's been kind of this like love-hate, push-pull relationship between collectors, dealers, um, you know, and the fairs itself. And I see some, some parallels with Nicole and Maureen, the, the experiences you had where going into 2020, what, right before lockdown was like the art show and armory show. And it was just at a very distinct, like, you know, everybody was on tenterhooks and it was just like, will it happen? And then it did happen. And then shortly after everything kind of, you know, w well, did go into lockdown. What was your experience in the early days? Like, what was your time spent doing? Like, you had just finished your event and now instead of like, okay, we can relax and look forward to next year, we're all in this unprecedented time. Like, if you could just share maybe some of the main things that you were doing to manage yeah, we were very days. lucky because we had announced the Friday prior to the, the fair being over. Um, we, I was so excited. We had a front page uh, art section announcement that we were moving to the Javits Center and that we were moving to September, which we will be doing for... Yes, she wanted to <laughs> for confirm the, that is it's that cemented is, in that the That is calendar. not changing, and it didn't have to do with COVID. <laughs> that was something that was very exciting for us. Um, and, and, yeah, so we had however many months, 15 months, 18 months. Yeah, we had, we had a large amount of time, more than 12, which we all normally have to prepare our fairs. And so we were very lucky. We happened, we were kind of the last fair to happen. Um, and then, yeah, we didn't have to cancel an addition. So I feel very blessed and lucky in that regard. It wasn't, our, it wasn't because of COVID, it wasn't, it was just, it just happened that way. Um, so we, immediately after the fair pivoted to let's let all the fairs who had to cancel do their thing and kind of take a back seat. What we did do is something called um, Armory Access Curated. So we had some galleries as these OVRs started popping up, we had galleries, younger galleries who couldn't afford to create a platform like that. So we created a platform, but we curated it. So it wasn't us picking a handful of galleries. It was curators selecting mm -hmm. more of kind of a curated exhibition because also people started to get burned out by OVRs. There was a lot yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, so we tried to take a little bit of a back seat right after. And then as we were planning for 2021, we um, we just did a couple of, of the online platforms. Okay, I mean, it feels like the, the gap was longer than it was. The fact that I realized now you were back in 2021 is kind of amazing in, in retrospect. And Maureen, I remember you telling me that part of your outreach to your member galleries was a survey um, and that you gleaned some really valuable information. Maybe you wanna share some of that. Yeah, the, the, uh, we did two surveys, right? So we did the first survey, and it wasn't just our members. We talked to a lot of local trade associations across the U.S. and asked them to participate, too. I needed data to get to Washington. Part of my job is to spend time in Washington talking with legislators about the needs of the small business community that make up the gallery world. And we needed as much data as we could get as fast as we could get. So we did the survey in May of 2020 and May of 2021. And so that first survey is about what was the last four weeks like? What do you project the next two quarters to be like through 2020? And then 2021 was about, well, what was 2020 really like for you once you got past the initial shock of that? And, when Eileen and I were talking, I went back to some of those numbers, and just to show you, not that anybody needs reminding, but just to show you how bleak it was um, in those first early days, we asked the question, if you looked at your revenue in 2019 from mid-March to mid-April, and you compared it to your revenue in 2020 from mid-March to mid-April, what was the decrease? We assumed it was gonna be a decrease there was an 85% decrease in the revenue. I mean, people just, uh, and anecdotally, talking to my members, they said, we don't know if we're gonna make it, right? So we spent those early days, much like Nicole, I wasn't worried about the show, I was worried about our members. And when we started to see those numbers, of course, and we t saw the writing on the wall, we immediately pivoted to our public policy advisors in Washington and we said, Okay, what do you know about what's happening? We hear rumors on the street about perhaps some kind of what became the PPP program that you might be familiar with, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which 
changed a lot of people, small business owners' lives in those moments. So our job was to get as much information as fast as we could to our members about participating in that loan program, participating in other grant programs, just to keep the lights on, right? So that was our focus really in those first six months is to help them stay afloat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Helen, were you at Stoneleaf at the time? What was your experience and what were you concentrating on? I mean, if you weren't a fair director then, yeah. what was your... Yeah, so plan? I was upstate in the woods being a weird little forest <laughs> pixie um, <laughs> with uh, my kid and my husband trapped uh, with them. Some of the most joyous times. Um, <laughs> so I was really focused on the residency and also providing respite for any artists that needed to get out of the city. So, so we live at Stoneleaf and then we, there's an artist cabin, like a three bedroom cabin. So we had to cancel the residency, um, but we also heard that one of our previous artists in residence, Macon Reed, was um, at the Royal Academy um, doing. Um, uh, uh, doing a residency there. And I saw on Facebook that she had nowhere to go. She was being kicked out of London and then she didn't have anywhere to go. So she came and lived in the cabin and um, became our little family and she's, um, she's coming back this year. Um, but Eric, my husband, um, owns a design and production company and he works on a bunch of fairs. Um, and so his business just completely stopped, okay. obviously. So he was the one that had like, you know, the mental breakdown and sorry Eric um, but you know it's like when you're with a partner like one of you when one of you goes into crisis the other one just goes into like fix it mm -hmm. so um, yeah I would just you know he's got to spend actually a lot of time with our son Harry who was like one and a half I think at the time okay. so actually that was a, a, a really beautiful thing during that time because they just got to to be together because he wasn't running around to all the art fairs and yeah. now he's running around to all the art fairs again okay um, one of the things that occurred to me as we were tracking the cancellations and watching uh, like the auction business pivoted, they hired Hollywood producers to build these hybrid stages and I couldn't believe, I was actually impressed and surprised that they were able to mount these hybrid auctions with taking bids from all over the world and, and being able to pull it off on some level, but I couldn't help but just feel like the fairs were the hardest hit. It was just like every time there was a, a, a plan to do something, it was sort of like a travel restriction would pop up or here or there. And I, I want to know what you all kind of thought or experienced with online viewing rooms, either for your own platform or others, like where they were then. I mean, we, we kind of felt like they were falling flat. Like, where do you see them now going forward in the, in the space of the art fair? I'm not going to answer that question, but I'm going to answer a part of that. Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to address something that you brought up, which is that art fairs were really, really uh, all events were hit very hard, and I think that the nature of running an art fair is to be nimble. Mm -hmm. So you you know going in that something's going to go wrong. You're you're creating this enormous event over mm -hmm. a multi-day period, and you have to be flexible, and your team has to be flexible, and that's the way it is. So OVRs came out of that, right? right. We were always sort of the industry that was behind a little bit in that regard, right. and. Um, and so how can we still be effective when you can't go out to galleries, when you can't go to affairs? But it's not ideal, right? It's right. our job to be looking at all those OV OVRs for other fairs, and it gets tedious mm -hmm. after a while. Yeah. So there is nothing that can replicate, and that's why fairs or, and galleries and uh, you know everything where you can interact with art in person is still incredibly relevant and right. and people are seeking that you mm -hmm. know I was just in Basel it was it was the energy was there people were selling because it's it's part of the experience yeah. to see something there's just work that doesn't translate for sure yeah. um, digitally yeah and so it was very important it kept some of those galleries that were saying to Maureen I don't know that I can keep my doors open right mm -hmm. well this helped allow that but there's a hybrid but I think the 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 people that are interested in experiencing art really want to see it in person. Mm -hmm. Great one. Um, one thing, like as I was watching everything unfold, I was having conversations with galleries constantly, and some of them, like in the height of lockdown, were saying, like, "Well, my margins are better. I'm not going to do fairs anymore." Or, or some people would tell me, like, when when they started coming back, I'm just ab I'm just absolutely not doing them. That seems to have gone totally to the wayside. Like, there's nobody that doesn't, even the people that I talked to that were, were reluctant say things to me like, um, you know, it's just, 
you can be in Chelsea, like a dealer told me in Chelsea, um, I have a gallery in Chelsea, but I'm here at the Armory Show and I've met like 10 times more people than I would have. I mean, it's the nature, it's the nature of the beast. And also just about you need to keep meeting new clients. You can't just depend on foot traffic. I, those are some of my takeaways that it's like, it's back, it's here to stay. Everybody loves them and needs them, even if they're local, like an LA dealer going to Felix or a dealer in Chelsea. What are some of your biggest takeaways about where dealers stand with their relationships to fairs now? Maybe, Helen, you want to take that since you're in the midst of this inaugural photo yeah. fairs. Um, yeah, I mean, I, um, I think, you know, they work for a reason, like what you were saying. There's nothing like experiencing art and people. And, and we have the opportunity, and it's our job, to bring together a large audience uh, who are, you know, concentrated collectors, curators, to be able to broaden the gallery's network and make sales because we're in service to the galleries, right? And especially Maureen in terms of you know, with the membership. And ultimately, you know, I was having a conversation at um, Howard Greenberg Gallery today, and we are talking about, like, how I want to be able to bring people to the gallery as well and open up the archives and make those connections. So it's, it's twofold, you know? It's like we... I don't think I answered your question. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like you do. I guess I'm just asking you, like, is your conversations with dealers the same? Like, I, I felt like there was so much confidence of, like, it's never going to go back. We're ne we're, we don't need them anymore. It's and back, I feel like that, baby. and I'm not just saying that because you're all fair directors. Like, I've been to enough fairs now since we've recovered to see that. And I guess, so for me, most of the dealers that I talk to are focusing mostly on geography and scale. Like, what work do we bring to Seoul, South Korea for freeze? We're going to be conservative there because we're going to a place we haven't done business before. I just want to know, I guess, like, what what you see as like the main um, sort of like takeaways that you experienced during lockdown that you think are here to stay that are different from what we had in the past. Like I, I just said, I'm sorry, I'm not being clear about this. I feel like dealers are fine tuning their strategy and like are you seeing the same and how does it affect what you do? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, I mean, but that's exactly <laughs> it. You're absolutely right. I mean, we were so naive in the first survey. One of the questions was, do you think you'll do any other fairs in 2020? <laughs> So, you know, um, but to go back to your original question, and, and really what we're all about here is creating opportunities for all of us to share space, sharing space with physical artwork. That cannot be replicated, right? It just can't be replicated in any other form but the physical form. And, and it doesn't have to be. Um, and to your point, Eileen, just now, I think it is about because there are so many options for galleries for fairs, they have to pick the ones that make the most sense for them, for their client base, for developing a new client base, for the program, for the artists, right? Because we are all in service, not just to the galleries, but to their artists, right? So, you know what, Todd Hosfeld is one of our members, and he always says that the art show is the fair that fits my program best. And I think every single one of us have heard that about people who exhibit at our fairs. Mm -hmm. They're looking for the, the place that fits their program best in whatever form that might take. And, and maybe different fairs fit different parts of their program in different ways. But I think gallerists are becoming very, very savvy about what's the secret sauce for that fair in that moment at that time. Mm -hmm. And when they hit it right, Everything is great, yeah. right? It's great for the artists. It's great for the dealers. Yeah. It's great for the, the industry at large. Yeah. Um, and, and then, I mean, at the same time, there is competition. There's a competitive landscape, right? So how do you convince people like ours is the one to do? Like, wh what kind of challenges and conversations do you have with people? Well, I think... First of all, we're all in New York, so <laughs> that kind of sells itself, <laughs> which is a lot of people want to be... have a presence in New York. But... Um, it's really, the galleries are becoming, as are the collectors, more selective post-lockdown of, you know, to Maureen, Maureen said it beautifully, you know, they're, they're choosing the fairs. We obviously 
are doing <laughs> doing sales, trying to get people to, to come, but they are making those decisions based on what works for them. This make the, you know, I'm gonna do our Basel Hong Kong because I need to tap into that market and the energy there was really good this year or whatever it is. But they're, they're gonna be, I think, based on the conversations that I've had, more selective mm -hmm. about which fairs they're doing. Um, they're not maybe going to take as many risks as they did pre-COVID. Also, the economy might have something yeah. to do with that. Yeah. Um, they're going to go with things that they think are going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And the collectors are going to go to events that they feel are worth going to. You know, it's not, you don't have to be on the I've got to go to every art fair right. train like we used to sort yeah. of have to do, <laughs> yeah. which, is, which is healthy. Yeah. Right. So I embrace that. Yeah. Um, and I thought maybe um, both of you could talk a little bit about photo fairs being alongside Armory Show, mm -hmm. and, and maybe Helen also, because I realized until I was writing my intro for <laughs> Digest the other day, I didn't know a ton about photo fairs. I had never mm -hmm. been to it before mm -hmm. in Shanghai. Maybe you could share with the audience a little bit about yeah. what the platform is like. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, so we're, <laughs> so we're really excited. Um, so Photo Fairs New York is the inaugural fair. We just announced our 61 exhibitors, and it's... It's a contemporary art fair that celebrates photography um, and image making. So uh, you'll be able to come and see some incredible galleries um, who are putting on uh, really epic works. Um, but to get back to your point about the armory, so when I got the job, I put my art fair hat up. Okay, I was I also like- I to ask you what lured yeah, you back. That I was, was like, questions. I am in the woods. <laughs> I am woman, like I was up there and I was, and then I got a call from a friend who said, oh, I talked to this guy who wants to la launch a photography fair. I was like, sure, I'll have, a, I'll have a chat with you. Had a chat and I was like, yes, love it, excited, like the niche, like where it's going, like Photo Fair Shanghai. So it's like a mix of galleries. It represents uh, galleries that are fully focused on photography. Um, and so we've kind of taken that, but also we're working with a lot of contemporary art galleries. I see some here tonight um, who, are, um, who have artists that work with photography, lens-based, video, film, um, and really thinking about image making as that thread, um, which is kind of exciting to be part of an art fair. Um, and really celebrate it. But when I got the job, the first person, <laughs> the first person I told was Nicole. I was like, Nicole, do you want to grab a drink? Um, she's like, sure, yeah. So I grab grabbed a drink and I was like, I was really nervous because like Nicole is not only an epic human, but the Armory show is like, it's New York's like show, you know, it's like, so I was like, Nicole, um, and then we were talking about how crazy art fairs are, and, and she's like, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> about that. How do you feel about being neighbors? <laughs> um, and the first thing she said to me was, of course. And anyway, so it was really, really good. And we're really lucky to have such a good friendship. And also, you know, for a huge, well-established art fair to be so open and collaborative to us. And it's something we were talking about earlier. Like, you don't see that. Like, there's, you know, there's a lot of competition. And of course, like, we all want our galleries to sell. We all want the artists to be able to continue to work in their studios. Um, but, you know, there's a great quote that I always get wrong about tides and all boats rising. I bet you know it, Maureen. <laughs> Maureen. More, you see, yeah. See, this is see, this is what I mean. This collaboration. So, you know, what you're seeing here is what I love and would like to see more in the art world, in the photography world. And I'm rambling, but I'm just very grateful to be on this stage with friends, with peers, with people I yeah. admire, and we all want to help each other out because we're in the same boat. And I think it's really exciting that um, with the, the way it was described that it's not just pure photography galleries. It, it's, it is artists that work heavily in photography. And I also re re um, read about some technology companies. What do you see the art fair and photo fairs? How do you see them complementing each other? I mean, I see us like, you know, we're, we're only like 61 exhibitors. So, you know, it's going to be an intimate fair. Um, about a third of those are going to be solo shows. 
um, which I'm really, really excited about. And because it has a specific focus, of course it's going to be different. Um, and, you know, the Armory has like 200 plus incredible contemporary, go on. Roughly 200, <laughs> slightly more than 225-ish, which, which we've pared back from last year, not because we didn't have interest. We had more, we had record number of applications this year, mm -hmm. but because we, from the feedback that we got, you know, mm -hmm. it was, it was, um, it, people told us that they thought it would be better to be a little bit, a little bit smaller. So we're just mm -hmm. a little bit smaller. Okay. But I think they will complement one another. I mean, I, I want to echo what Helen was saying in that these are not just colleagues, these are friends, but the history of the ADAA and the Armory Show and, and that collaboration um, happening at the same time and then not for various reasons, not beyond our control, and trying to always bridge those two events. I mean, prior to COVID, right? She was happening the week before and we would do an event together on the on the Sunday or Saturday, whatever it was, right before we started and she was ending yeah. and I was like, damn you. She was done with her fair and I was like, oh, I'm on the cusp of it. So that doesn't go away because she's in November. And of yeah. course, I you know, initially was like, oh, two fairs at the Javits, that's a lot. And then I heard Helen was in charge. I was like, we're gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be amazing. We're gonna make it, we're gonna make it work. Yeah. And it's gonna be a huge draw for people. Yeah. So I think you know, relationships are everything in the art world. And I think that um, there should be more, to Helen's point, there should be more of this. How can we help support one another? How can we help mm -hmm. make, your exhibitors, your exhibitors, my exhibitors, all have successful events. Mm -hmm. Is there more like tiered pricing now or more things to help smaller galleries than there was in the past? Is that like a thing? Uh, we started the solo section, which is subsidized um, costs, but yeah, we still, we, and we expanded our present section. So mm -hmm, it used to be right. 30 galleries, it's now 40 galleries. That's the future of the art fair. Mm -hmm. So we definitely listen, but, I'm not gonna lie, the Javits is not, as Helen well knows, not a cheap place to hold yeah. an event. Yeah. So we're not, you know, yeah. we have to not yeah. lose money. That's, okay. <laughs> that's the and, goal, but, um, but we, do, we do keep that, into, yeah. take yeah. that into consideration for sure. Um, this is a question for both of you, because well, with you, the, the change in venue was tied with the change in calendar, but Maureen, like, you're still in the uh, Park Avenue Armory, which was the mainstay of the show. What, if anything, have been the big differences between having it in November versus February, to the extent that you've seen. Like, I'm just curious if there's a, a, a big change as far as. Well, I'll say that the weather is uh, <laughs> a lot better. Yeah. Because we've had Feb uh, like February shows where there's a bomb cyclone and yeah. the whole fair I shuts remember down. those. Right. <laughs> so uh, the, the weather is certainly a lot better. But it's also, too, for us, it's timed with the November auction sales. Um, folks are coming in town for the previews, and that helps bring people into the fair naturally. And you talked a little bit about collaboration, and on top of the fabulous collaboration I get to have on a regular basis with the fabulous ladies sitting here to my left, we also, of course, collaborate with our charitable partner, Henry Street Settlement. So the fair is kind of a little unusual in that it's it's two organizations, nonprofit organizations, working together to make this fair happen, right? It's us, the ADAA, and Henry Street Settlement, which is celebrating its 130th year now, social services organization, with, uh, which Very Eileen well. has a very special connection to. Uh, as yes, well. my, my aunt, who is a Josephite nun, worked there for years as a counselor. Oh, and she counseled um, at risk women and uh, women who needed all kinds of counseling. Uh, yeah, so, and I, and I visited her there many times and was always just amazed at how robust the program was, so, yeah. And the first time <laughs> I met Eileen, we made that connection down at Henry yeah. Street. So, so all that's to say, so from the very beginning of the fair, these two organizations collaborated together to make this fair happen. And all of our proceeds, not just the benefit preview night, but the ticket proceeds, and I know both of you guys know this organization and are, are really supportive of it, um, they go to benefit Henry Street. So. In 35 years, this is our 35th year. Oh Congratulations. The fair has raised $36 million Whoa. in unrestricted funds for Henry Street. Like, that's everybody doing that work. That's you know the whole, all of those teams. But 
So making those decisions about like we can't just pick up and move to a fair like a different date on the calendar. It's multiple conversations. We Nicole and I talk constantly about okay, you're gonna be in September. Okay, well, well we think we can do November. I mean like <laughs> hours on the phone. Um, but it was also talking with Henry Street about work what worked for them for their donation cycle. Is this gonna these were big risks that all of these people were taking. Everybody here was taking in that moment. And um, well done. <laughs> I mean, venue is an issue, yeah. right? In right. New York Series City. Issue. You would think yeah. New York City would have all the venues, yeah. but it has none of the venues. Yeah. Um, the Javits Center, everyone had said, ugh, the Javits Center, why would you have a fair there? I remember you know, this and, feeling, yeah. You yeah. guys pulled it off. I told you that that first It's day, the only so venue it. that can hold a fair mm -hmm. of our size and, and another fair, uh -huh. right? And um, it wasn't easy to, to secure that venue, but yeah. it was important, Yeah. And, and we did it. The other thing that we should let the audience know is that Maureen is a nonprofit organization. To right. pull off an art fair, in addition to all her other hats mm -hmm. that she wears, and be a nonprofit, I don't know how you do it, because we're for-profit <laughs> entities, and it's not easy. Yeah. So. Just, we're making it up as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And Nicole, one of the things that I noticed the first year at the Javits Center was the fact that you didn't have to go on separate piers anymore. So like that, and dealers talked about welcome. that. You're welcome. You, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting to the end of one pier and being like, oh my God, I have a whole other one. I can't do it. But um, so that's an obvious benefit. What, what other things have you noticed in, in terms of both venue and then calendar and your feedback from so you? So many things. <laughs> um, climate. You know, there were micro microclimates at the Javits Center. I okay. mean, at the at the okay. piers. I don't um, know if I knew that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you would be in one part of the piers. And yeah, see, I have exhibitors <laughs> shaking their heads. You betcha. There, It would be freeze because it was March, I'll remind you. Yeah, Blizzards so snow, sleeting yeah. sideways. <laughs> and um, you would, I would, you know, I'd have to bring tea to exhibitors who were freezing. And then you would also have, um, you know, your faces melting in other parts of the, okay. of the venue. So, yeah, we have... A, a consistent yeah, <laughs> climate. <landscape. laughs> um, it's just a it's just a world class venue, and it was um, for those who don't want to remember that it was a vaccination center. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> which I went to. A, I was in the Bronx, and I went then to see the Javits Center to do a site visit, and they had like a you know a little violinist playing for all the people waiting. I was like, this was not my experience for my vaccination. I just want all of you to know that it's very very fancy. Um, it's it's just a whole nother level for yeah. the fair, which yeah. was necessary. And the peers served their purpose and were amazing for over 20 years. But it was time. Um, yeah. yeah, they're they're currently not being used for <laughs> events. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the right decision. Yeah. Uh, so we're very very happy yeah. there and feel feel very fortunate because a lot of other fairs wanted that space. Yeah. But your but the Armory Show's overhaul of it was so key. I mean, I had that feeling about the Javits Center even before it was a vaccination vaccination center. I was like, how are they going to pull this off? And you did. So maybe you can share. Some Fred of Fisher that and partners, magic, right? who okay. were our architects, were an integral part of that. Um, we shared our vision, and they made it happen. Mm -hmm. And I have to give them all the credit mm -hmm. because they were, you know, though we don't, you don't have to climb up a staircase of death or walk <laughs> a, an entire city block to get to the other side. We do have, they've created this fabulous diagonal section called the Agora, which mm -hmm. links the three halls that we, that we take up. And I think that was crucial to not have one hall feel different than the other yeah. hall. We're all under one roof, which is a huge benefit to all of our exhibitors. Yeah. And I think they pulled it off beautifully. Yeah, I would agree. And even just the ma amazing public art that you'd be just like walking right into as you're going from booth to booth, that was also just stunning. And space, yes. right? And to have architects yes. who are able to envision something versus just the peers, it was, you don't really have, you, you just go down one side and come yeah. back another. That's all you yeah. can do. Yeah. And here you've got an open, yeah. open space that you can, they could envision anything. And I think they did a great job. You have to keep in mind that it's a fair and they, there has to be a sort of systematic yeah. approach, but yeah. they made it, they made it work. And our uh, marvelous curators who do all of the, you know, uh, in particular our platform section mm -hmm. with the large scale works that gives them the sight lines and the and the space to breathe. Yeah, great. 
Um, what um, I'm going to ask this question of each of you. What are you most looking forward to for your um, venue, your fair this year? Now that we're kind of really back to normal, stabilized. There's no more trepidation. Like the, the early versions of the fairs, like the first version of Freeze at the Shed, was like we were all still wearing masks. Nobody had really socialized. It felt like it took a couple of I won't I wouldn't say false starts, but just like scaled back versions of Art Basel, Freeze, um, most fairs before we feel like we're really off to the races now. So. Um, in the sense that we're confident we're on solid ground. What are you most looking forward to? And you have your inaugural edition, keeping in mind. I mean, that's what I'm most excited about is um, being able to open the doors and have people come in and see what our team, our galleries, the artists have all, all been working on and see it under one roof um, and connect. And this is something else I, I was thinking about when you were talking. It's like the other thing about you know, working on a fair is like, there are so many things. Like Nicole's like, you know, talking about the architecture, the climate control, the galleries, the artists. Like there are so many things that these women do that, that we do for art fairs um, that are pretty bonkers um, and that we have to keep track of all the time. Um, and I just kind of wanted to give like a shout out to that because it can sometimes be a thankless role but I think all of us are in it because of our love of art and bringing people together. So that's me getting sentimental. <laughs> that's what we love about you. Um, I think just the fall, like having this moment in the fall that it that it starts, we're coming back to school with yeah. our fairs and then it doesn't end, it, it continues on. Um, that is a real treat, I think, for people who are coming to New York, planning to come to New York, and I have to say the weather. <laughs> who knows with climate change what happens, right? But um, have, being able to activate at the US Open with our partnership there, having Armory off-site at the yeah. various venues um, and locations throughout the city, that's uh, really great, because yeah. it's for people who don't even know what the Armory show is, yeah. they can experience public art there are people, <laughs> believe it or not. There are people. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what I'm most excited about. Great, great. Maureen? Uh, well, I'll just round third and bring it home then. <laughs> Helen was saying it earlier about you're either an art fair person or you're not. There's that moment when we're all together. I have this incredible team at ADA that works with me on, on the fair and everything else we do. And there's this moment where we everybody starts to come into the Park Avenue Armory, which is, you know, if you haven't been, you'll come this year. It's this beautiful um, barrel vaulted ceiling. I think it's the largest uninterrupted space in New York City, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. Look at you. <laughs> so there's that moment where everybody comes in and the members are coming in and they're starting to unpack the boxes and the, you know, David Garza and Ellen and the team at Henry Street Settlement all start to come in. And there's that, that moment of excitement and possibility just before opening bell hits where you think like, oh yeah, this is why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. And it, that, that can't be replicated. And yeah. that is always what we look forward to every year, but really are looking forward to this yeah. year. As you said, Eileen, because we're finally now in full swing again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just want to share one interesting story with the room. Nicole, you'll appreciate this. In, I'm dating myself, but in the late 90s, I was working for the Wall Street Journal, and my editor brought me to the Gramercy International Fair, which was li like, that was the OG of art the fairs, OG. right? OG, 1994. Yeah, I, I went like a couple of years in and um, it was really cool. Like you just walked from room to room in the Gramercy Hotel. You saw some really wild things. People had like, um, we couldn't nail anything to the wall. The yeah. Ceiling, like, on the People even like used the bathroom like for, you know, propping up paintings or whatever. And then after that, I left the art world for a couple of years and I went, went back to like writing about finance stuff. And when I was at the Armory at the Piers in 2001 or 2002, I'd come back to the art world. Somebody said to me, oh, yeah, that's this fair. And I was blown away because it went from a hotel thing. Like, I, I missed the whole transition. But it was like, from there, fairs were off to the I mean, some are still held in hotels. And it's very exciting. And it's boutique-y and you know, kind of intimate. But I just couldn't believe how fast it grew into that. Yeah, that's it's, my two cents. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and Maureen mentioned her team. And I think that's an important thing I would want to come back to is that none of this happens without, I mean, we're the ones who get 
all the credit mm -hmm. for the work, but I have team members here, um, and as do you all have team <laughs> members here, and we have incredible teams, and all of us have to have our heads examined because working at a fair is insane. Yeah, they're all laughing, I see all of them. Um, it's crazy, it's full on, and it's you have to be dedicated to art and artists and dealers and all of it. Um, but the teams are what make this happen, mm -hmm. and, and without them, we would be nowhere. Say no more. Um, does anybody want to add anything before I open it up to questions? I just want to say, this is something we were talking about earlier, is also, <laughs> uh oh, she said, um, we get questions all the time, like, it takes you a year to put on a fair? Really? What do you do? What? <laughs> and yeah, we wish we had more time. It's, it's insane. And we all have small teams as well. So everybody's wearing all the hats. And I think that we know it's a, it's a rare breed, the art fair director. Mm -hmm. And we have, it's like a cult because we all know what we go through. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody else that understands it. Spouses, partners, yeah. friends. I'm, I'm going to start off as anonymous, like in the in in the fall, so you guys can come to Stoneleaf. We can talk shop, like rest, like. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got and, and 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 it's um it's an amazing job, and yeah. we're all very lucky to have it. But but it but yeah, it takes yeah. a year. Yeah. I mean, from, <laughs> Easily. from the outside, it always struck me as like um, such an. Ex I, I, I can only imagine how crazy it must be. I've because no, you're you're dealing with like. 200 galleries is probably each its own story and its own situation. But it always did actually seem very exciting to me. Like when I was first a journalist, I was like, that must be a cool job. There are <laughs> elements of it that are very there cool. There would have to be for all of you to keep doing it, right? And then there are parts that, yeah, <laughs> are less cool. 